Within seconds of booting up Silent Hill 2, I felt claustrophobic. Story aside, I felt locked within a map that seemed determined to lock me out of it. Every path was blocked, not a single building opened, and all the while I floundered beneath that famous fog. Dated mechanics only deepened that feeling. Previously unapproachable aspects of fixed camera games felt right at home here. Bad camera angles were forced even further. Loading screens between rooms made me terrified of how exposed and disoriented I was about to be. Every time I tried a new door, I prayed this one won't open and I won't hear the screech of a radio and Maria won't be standing right there. Oh God, she's right there. And this game's got janky ass combat. I don't know how it felt in 2001, but to my twin stick brain, it felt primitive and persistent like bludgeoning someone that can't fight back properly. The movement felt odd, too. Sprinting in this game feels like doing 90 in a blizzard. Things will pop up before you have time to react. James will rocket past doors and ram into corners and other characters. This awkward gait would be jarring in a modern title, but I felt Silent Hill 2 was telling me it was all right to saunter. There's no hurry. James is looking for someone he knows to be dead, anyway. I actually started this game on easy, intending to breeze through and take in the story, but an hour in I actually started over. I felt like I needed to be stuck. I thought of a note I'd lifted off a dead man. If you want to go on living, you'd be better off just sitting in the dark and staying quiet. But even that probably won't save you. That got relevant real quick because the second time around, I decided James was an intellectual and set riddles to hard mode. I spent two days on the first real puzzle. I notated it with pencil and paper, talked through it with friends, and while I mulled it over far from my laptop, I'd picture James cramped up in that dark room, safe perhaps, but trapped, unabsolved, imprisoned. The stifling mechanics of the opening hours prefaced that rapid descent of the final act. Guiding me to dead ends, I entered entirely of my own volition, physically enforcing James' desperate need to be punished. I related to James in these moments. The bitter aftertaste of hurt, that sorrow and self-sabotage, that bizarre instincts to push yourself downward and downward until one day you emerge and the world has simply continued on without you. The credits rolled and I wasn't even sure what James had done, but I felt it. And for weeks I felt it. I shunned daylight to lock myself in the darker corners of university campus. I would hid from the world to venture those lakeside paths and bleak hallways of Silent Hill over and over again until I finally emerged to discover that recent actions had hurt somebody very close to me. Silent Hill 2 is my prison. As I'm sure you're all aware, there's a remake coming out this year, and that's exciting, I think. Because will the story stay intact? I'm sure. Will the cutscenes improve? Absolutely. But with graphics that would blow 90s gamer minds, a wide field of view, no loading screens, slick combat, would it lose some of this emotion the original made me feel? Will I spend half the game wondering if this angle that's forced down my throat every hallway implies that James' past is far more important than what's ahead? If he's so deeply rooted in where he's been that he barely cares for where he's going? I mean, probably not, but if this ages poorly, make fun of me in the comments. I, I gotta wrap it up, but look, the past few weeks I've been breathing, sleeping, and eating Silent Hill 2. I gotta barely talked about the story, but hey, I highly recommend you give it a spin. Go ahead, knock back a coffee and learn how to be scared of upper floors, run around some boss arenas like a fucking idiot, or you know, watch a few more video essays because this game has been dissected to death. I hope I added something new. Catch you next time. <laughs>